Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing the Keynesian multiplier. The multiplier is a critical element of the Keynesian macroeconomics. The idea came out as a response to the Great Depression of 1930s. It primarily revolves around the fact that when your GDP is below its potential level, demand side plays a significant role in determining national income and therefore stimulus provided by government in the form of increasing government spending will directly lead to nation's GDP and beneficiaries of these stimulus packages will increase their spending in turn and therefore generating more income in the economy. The end result being that overall we see a much bigger effect on our real GDP than the initial increase in government spending or the initial increase in aggregate spending by any one sector of the economy. Keynes' ideas were affirmed during World War II when we saw massive military spending leading to soaring economic growth, showing us that government stimulus in fact does beat out major recessions. However, the idea has not always remained that popular. It has gone in and out of fashion but it was brought back into mainstream policy making after the Great Recession of 2008-2009. We saw again governments across the globe offering massive bailouts when easing monetary conditions did not prove to be sufficient to bring economies out of their downward spiral. This amplified effect of government spending on our GDP is called the multiplier effect. Proponents of the model argue that the multiplier is always equal to or in fact higher than one. Whereas the critics of the model argue that any increase in government spending is completely off set by the decrease in investment spending by the private sector, the crowding out effect that we saw in our loanable funds market model. However, our experience coming out of the Great Depression and then again of the Great Financial Crisis of 2008-2009 tells us that multiplier more often than not is equal to or greater than one. And that is why governments are going back to the old school and using government stimulus packages to revive economies. Most recently, we saw this during the COVID-19 global pandemic, where again we saw massive bailouts being provided to the private sector by the government in US, Canada, UK and across the globe. Let's now look at the model. We will go over the simplified version of the income expenditure model, also referred to as the Keynesian cross model, and look at how the multiplier is derived. Understanding the derivation of the multiplier will also help you understand how does this amplified effect actually transpires in our economy. So we'll start with the consumption function. Consumption, remember, is a component of our aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure. The aggregate consumption function of our all households in the economy can be split into two parts. We have autonomous consumption over here, which is AC. So this is the consumption that is exogenous to the model. It does not depend upon our income. So even if income is zero or a million dollars, you will consume some basic goods and services and that's your autonomous consumption. However, the second component of your consumption depends upon your income and this is positively related to our income. Higher our disposable income, higher will be our consumption. Lower our disposable income, lower will be our consumption. But by how much does consumption change whenever income changes? That is given by the coefficient of our disposable income, MPC. MPC is our marginal propensity to consume. It tells us how much consumers will increase their spending for every $1 increase in their income. MPC is typically between zero and one. Marginal propensity to save is the proportion of your additional income that you save. So if your income increases by a dollar, MPS tells you how much of that dollar will you put in your savings? So MPS and MPC will always equal to one. For example, income rises by a dollar, MPC is 0.8, your consumption will now increase by 80 cents. For $10 increase in income, consumption spending rises by $8. Let's use this consumption function and put this in our aggregate expenditure equation. Aggregate expenditure is simply consumption plus investment plus your government purchases and net exports. Substituting for my consumption function, I have autonomous consumption plus MPC times my disposable income plus the remaining three components of my aggregate expenditure. Next, to keep things very simple, we're going to assume that there are no taxes in transfers. So if there are no taxes in transfers, my disposable income is equal to my overall national income. So Y minus T plus TR, these two are now both zero. Disposable income is now simply equal to our GDP. I will now use this equation in order to solve for our multiplier. The first step is we are going to use our equilibrium condition, which is that at equilibrium, GDP is equal to our aggregate expenditure. You can think of this as your expenditure approach to calculating real GDP. Overall spending on final goods and services produced in an economy will always equal the real income or real GDP for that economy. So substitute 
substituting for my aggregate expenditure equation over here. And within this, I know it's autonomous consumption plus MPC times Y plus I plus G plus net exports. I'm further assuming that my planned investment does not depend upon income. Government purchases do not depend upon our income or on our real GDP and net exports are also autonomous. So all three are constant along with our autonomous consumption. Y is our only variable over here. So I can take all terms with Y on one hand side and that leaves you with autonomous consumption, planned investment, G and net exports. Since all of these are not dependent upon our real GDP or real income, I can combine them together and call them our autonomous expenditure and label them as AE0. Solving for GDP and substituting AE0 over here, isolating Y, we get 1 over 1 minus MPC times AE0. Now what is this telling you? This is telling you that every time autonomous expenditure increases by a dollar, real GDP over Overall will increase by 1 over 1 minus MPC. Now what is 1 over 1 minus MPC? If MPC is less than 1 and higher than 0, this means that 1 over 1 minus MPC will always be greater than 1. And you can use our previous example, MPC of 0.8 will give you 1 over 1 minus MPC as 5. And what is it indicating to us? For every dollar increase in autonomous aggregate expenditure, so any of these components of spending going up, will cause our real GDP to increase by five times or by five dollars. This autonomous expenditure can be increasing because of any of these components. But in terms of fiscal policy, we'll just isolate the effect of government purchases. Isolating the effect of government purchases on real GDP, I've rewritten my equation as change in real GDP is equal to one over one minus NPC times change in government purchases. So for now, as G increases by a dollar, real GDP increases by one over one minus MPC. And this one over one minus MPC is called our multiplier. This is giving us that amplified effect on our overall economy when government increases its fiscal spending. Likewise, if government reduces its spending, it will again have an amplified effect on the overall economy. So with our previous example, MPC of 0.8 was giving you a multiplier of 5. Notice the higher the MPC, higher is the multiplier. Lower the MPC, lower is the multiplier. So for example, if my MPC is of 0.6, that will give me a multiplier of 2.5. It's almost half as much. Every time government increases its spending by a dollar, real GDP will only increase by $2.5. We can also similarly solve for our taxes and transfer multipliers. Again, I'll start with my aggregate expenditure equation. And again, I will substitute for my consumption function. But now I will not assume taxes and transfers are zero. Instead, I will write the whole term yd equals y plus tr minus t and rewrite my aggregate expenditure with this entire term in it. I can again expand this part and also put y equals ae at equilibrium. Substituting for y over here, we have ac plus mpc times y minus mpc times t plus mpc times transfers plus i plus g plus net exports. Again, these are all autonomous, so they are not being affected by your real GDP along with autonomous consumption. So I can put them together as autonomous expenditure, ae naught, and I'm left with MPC times Y minus MPC times T plus MPC times transfers. Solving for Y, note that my multiplier or the coefficient for AE0 is still the same. Any changes in our autonomous expenditure by a dollar will cause our real GDP to increase by 1 over 1 minus MPC or the multiplier for these changes. Whereas changes in taxes and transfers do not have the same coefficient. Our multiplier is now significantly different. It is in fact MPC over 1 minus MPC. Another thing to note over here is that the coefficient over here is negative for taxes. So a dollar increase in taxes will cause your real GDP to decrease. Whereas a dollar increase in transfers will cause your real GDP to increase. Even though the magnitude is the same, the coefficients have different signs associated with them, which also makes sense intuitively. Higher taxes are going to have a dampening effect on our aggregate demand and higher transfers are going to have a stimulating effect on our aggregate demand. Marginal propensity to consume when divided by 1 minus MPC makes it a lot smaller than our previous multiplier of 1 over 1 minus MPC. And you can see that with the help of an example. Again, let's use MPC of 0.8. It gave me the multiplier of government spending as 5. Same MPC, so the same economy with the same marginal propensity to consume. But now if the stimulus is being provided through taxes or transfers, the multiplier will be a lot smaller. 
it's only four. For every one dollar increase in transfers or a one dollar reduction in taxes, real GDP will only increase by four dollars or four times of this initial stimulus over here. So we have two scenarios over here. We could have a stimulus being provided through government purchases or the stimulus being provided through transfer payments. Marginal propensity to consume in both cases is exactly the same 0.5. So in the first round, in the case of government purchases, government increases spending by 50 billion dollars. The beneficiaries of this spending see their income rising by 50 billion dollars and hence in the second round they increase their consumption by 0.5 times 50 billion dollars which is 25 billion dollars. If consumption is rising by 25 that means GDP is rising by 25 billion dollars. So again this will cause a third round of increased spending. In this case our consumption will rise by 0.5 of 25 which is 12.5 and this process will keep on going on and overall you will see that real GDP in this case is increasing by $100 billion. So we have summed up all of these rounds to see the overall impact on the economy because of this initial increase in government purchases of $50 billion. So we can either sum up this whole series or instead we can simply use our multiplier. With an MPC of 0.5, my government purchases multiplier is 2. And that is telling you that increase of government spending by $50 billion will cause my real GDP to change by hundred billion dollars. Now let's compare what happens if the stimulus is being provided through transfer payments. So in the first round, government increases transfers by 50 billion dollars. So they're providing a stimulus of 50 billion. However, this stimulus is increasing my disposable income by 50 billion dollars. Out of this disposable income, I do not spend all of it. So the beneficiaries will not increase their spending by 50. In the very first round, as the beneficiaries receive 50 billion, they spend 50 percent of it. So in the very first round, consumption only rises by $25 billion. And now in subsequent rounds, someone's spending is someone else's income. Again, consumption rises, therefore GDP rises and so on and so forth. But because of this first round, a part of that initial stimulus was absorbed by household savings. The full $50 billion never entered the economy. And the overall effect on your real GDP is significantly smaller than the impact over here. Alternatively, we can simply use our multiplier and see what will be the impact of this 50 billion dollars given an MPC of 0.5. So with MPC of 0.5 I know my transfer multiplier is MPC over 1 my MPC which gives you a multiplier of 1. If households in the economy have a marginal propensity to consume of 0.5 a dollar increase in transfer will also affect your real GDP in total by just one dollar. So now it's just a one for one change and that's exactly what we saw in the total summation over here. We we have overall transfers increased by $50 billion and real GDP also increasing by $50 billion only. So whenever we have fiscal stimulus provided by government purchases, it will have a more amplified effect, a bigger multiplier compared to the same stimulus package provided through transfer payments or through reduction in taxes. So that brings us to our conclusion for the fiscal multiplier. Now we will use this multiplier in our overall understanding of the fiscal policy.